Mr. President of the World Resources Forum, Excellencies, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and dear Achim, thank you for your kind words. It is my great pleasure to welcome you officially to Switzerland. We are in Davos, the venue for the annual World Economic Forum, the meeting at which the most influential leaders from business and politics come together and discuss the welfare of our planet and, of course, their own welfare too. Switzerland has just been awarded first place in the WEF ranking of the most competitive and innovative countries in the world. It is the fifth time he has he achieved this ranking. Switzerland has a developed social welfare system, has excellent educational institutes which are open to all, has a public transport network that covers almost all areas, and has a high quality of care system. Average life expectancy in Switzerland is now over 80 years. As you can see, life is good in this country. But this all is, of course, a price. Almost three Earth would be needed to sustain the standard of living in Switzerland today. Over half of Switzerland's footprint arises abroad due to the, to the importation of rough materials and goods. We have very few native rough materials in this country. We rely on import for almost every type of resource. 80% of our energy is imported. 100% of the metals are imported. 100% of rare earth are imported. 100% of fibers, fibers, fibers are imported. 70% of food is imported. We are extremely vulnerable to scarcity of resources and to possible crashes of the international markets of resources. The Federal Council, Switzerland national government, wants the Swiss economy to develop in the direction of a green economy and has been pursuing this goal for three years at the macroeconomic level. On the one side, he started the master plan on clean tech to support the development of resource efficient technologies. He started exploration of possibilities to introduce ecological elements at the earth of the taxation system is on the way to develop a more comp comprehensive GDP system. A year ago, the Green Party of Switzerland deposed a popular initiative, a typical Swiss instrument, with the aim to get a sustainable and resource efficient economy. It aims to enshrine in the federal constitution the objective of reducing Switzerland's ecological footprint by the year 20, 2050 so that, I quote, it does not exceed one single Earth when extrapolated to the global population. I don't doubt this. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Giro, member of the parliament of the Green Party, will uh, explore more this initiative in a later speech. The Federal Council seized the opportunity presented by the Green Popular Initiative and formulated a counter-proposal. In February of this year, it passed a resolution on the revision of the Environmental Protection Act and adopted the Green Economy Action Plan. The basic idea and conceptual orientation of both revised legislation and action plan largely covers the same ground as the proposal made by the Greens. Unlike the Green, 
party, the Federal Council, is relying on a step-by-step -step basis and, where possible, the objective should be achieved through voluntary measures. At the earth of the propo proposed legislation is a continual improvement approach like it is very known in the private sector. The goal of the, of the journey is defined in a qualitative way as a continual improvement, advancement of the resources efficiency. In a direct democracy, slower, consultative and consolidating processes are likely to be faster, faster than other to the end, at the end of the day. For this reason, our main motive in this piece of legislation is partnership and dialogue. The revised legislation identifies not only this general mechanism, but identifies two concrete areas in which improvement can be achieved by now. A first key area that will be subject to legally binding regulation is that of waste and rough materials, in which first step will be taken towards the establishment of a circular economy with the objective at the end to don't have waste at all. The second area concerns consumption and production. If voluntary measures fail to translate into environmental progress, the Federal Council will be granted powers to create ecological transparency for products and consumption. The Federal Council will submit the dispatch for the revision of the legislation to the Parliament in spring of the next year. And as you, as you can see, we have not reached our destination yet, but Switzerland is on the way. The same applies to other policy areas which have a, a big impact on the green economy. Climate policy makes an important contribution to the objective of the green economy. In January of this year, our new CO2 Act came into force. It stipulates that by 2020, Switzerland must reduce its domestic greenhouse gas emission by at least 20% compared with 1990. The Federal Council passed the Energy Strategy 2050 a few weeks ago. This includes measures to improve energy efficiency, including in the area of electricity use, and measures for the development of renewable power. The aim is to withdraw from nuclear power. Other legislative revisions in the areas of, for example, spatial, spatial planning or agricultural policy will contribute to Switzerland development towards a resource efficient, efficient economy. Switzerland is doing a lot for the more sustainable handling of resources and thanks to its innovative strengths and high level of prosperity, it is able to do, see, to do this. However, Switzerland is a very small country. When it comes to the global ecological footprint, exemplary be behavior at national level is not enough. A global perspective is needed as are global measures. Despite progress in some areas, many environmental problems have been exacerbated in recent, recent years and decades. Despite the Climate Change Convention, we have not yet succeeded in stemming the global rise of greenhouse gas emission, as the new IPCC report states. The loss of biological diversity can be observed throughout the world. Air quality remains unsatis unsatisfactory. In the case of ground level ozone, for example, we estimate that it, redu it, it is reducing agricultural yields in Europe and North America by up to 20%. Other areas are also a cause for concern. Chemicals, waste, water quality, a reduction of global forest area. You all know the facts and figures. Rio plus 20 did not bring about a decisive, a decisive break, breakthrough or not yet, we would say, in Switzerland. We know from our own experience how long political processes take if they require the support of all actors. We know that perseverance pays, 
and we know that privileged countries like Switzerland must lead the way. Leading the way, and I would like to stress this, ladies and gentlemen, leading the way does not mean making a solo run at being a star pu pupil. Leading the way also means supporting other nations in making their own adequate contribution. We do not have an unlimited period of time at our disposal. All countries must make a contribution and all countries must constantly increase this contribution. Differentiated but common responsibilities in this field too. In the course of this journey, we will need solid knowledge bases and we need platforms for reaching, for reaching agreements with each other, for coordinating our activities and identifying and exploit, exploiting untapped synergies. And as a jointly supported and widely accepted platform for maintaining the dialogue between science, politics and business on resource efficiency at a high level, the World Resource Forum can play a very important role here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is essential that you continue, continue to meet. Switzerland would like you to get together even more frequently. We would like the VRF to become a forum that provides periodic reporting on the resource efficiency of countries and becomes a global credible body. With this wish, I hope you will have in the next day a productive, successful conference. And thank you for taking the time to participate in it. Thank you very much.